Welcome back to Mr. JDM. I am Mr. JDM and today we're going to set the timing on this uh, D16, actually yeah it's a D16 ZC. I know I've done this before but with the engine out of the car we'll have better uh, visual access to see exactly how this is done. So I will rename my last uh, how to set timing video to something else and this will be the one that I'm going to refer to for now on. All right, as you can see, the engine is out of the car and this is going to be the same for all single cams. Um, whether you have a, a VTEC, non-VTEC, D15, D16, F-Series, it, it's all going to be pretty much the exact same. The F-Series is a little bit different just because it has balance uh balancing rods but to set the timing itself is pretty much the same but i i'm not going to lump the f series into this just because there are differences so we're going to say that this tutorial is for d15s and d16s single cam and non vtec or vtec it's all the same so the first thing you're going to need to do is remove the valve cover and then you'll need to remove this timing cover the upper timing cover and there will be two bolts one here and one over here all right now that we got the upper timing cover off we have to get the lower timing cover off now there will be a crank pulley so you're gonna have to remove this and everything that attaches to it all the belts the alternator if you have power steering um, AC it's pretty simple you have your 17 millimeter bolt that holds it in and you just unscrew that and then your harmonic balancer or crank pulley will come off and there will be a little pin that slides into that groove that you do not want to lose all right now that you have your crank pulley off we need to remove the lower timing cover and depending on what engine you have the timing cover fasteners will be in a different location but you're going to unscrew those and then pull your timing cover off now that we have the lower timing cover off this is what you're going to see this is your tensioner this is your water pump this is your lower crank gear and then you have your camshaft gear when you do this you should always replace the water pump there are only four bolts and then I guess a fifth one and that's it you'll have to remove the alternator bracket it's pretty simple and it'll save you a lot of trouble in the long run because you, you've already got this far you might as well go ahead and replace that another thing you should always replace is the tensioner because this thing will tend to wear out and Again, you're already this far, you might as well replace it. The tensioner also has this spring. Connects here and then to the bottom of the tensioner, there's a little hole. It's important to keep that connected. You don't want to forget to put this in. Another thing I should mention is you should remove your spark plugs because with them installed, it creates compression when you turn the crank and plus you can easily and more accurately place the position of the the crank gear in the location that it needs to be so on your crank gear you'll see that little notch right there that's where the timing mark is and then on the oil pump there will always be an arrow these two have to match up with each other And there we have it. The arrow is pointing directly to that little notch. Now the next step to setting the timing is we have to set the cam gear in the right location. On the cam gear, you're gonna have an up mark. You're gonna have a little mark over here and a mark over here. Obviously the up mark has to be facing upwards and then you want these two marks to line up with the top of the block. And now your camshaft 
is set in the right location. At this point, we need to install the belt. What I always do is I'll start at the bottom and work my way up around the tensioner, around the water pump, and then bring it back over. Now when you're pulling it up over the, the cam gear, you want to make sure none of your gears move, especially the bottom. And remember, pull from this side because you have your tensioner over here and this will push down and give you more of the belt to pull up. Because these two, you don't have to set timing. They just they'll go wherever you put them. Now you're gonna notice that there's a lot of play in here. So now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna turn this counterclockwise to get the play out of this. And you'll, you'll wanna crank it like three or four teeth, and that's pretty much it. Now we got the play out of that, and the play is over here now. We're gonna push the tensioner up and then tighten it down. So what we did was we pushed the tensioner upwards and then we tightened it down that way there's no play here, and there's no play in the belt here. Now it is important that you don't over tighten it. You wanna have some, but you don't wanna have, you know, you don't want it to be real floppy. Now what I always do is I'll double check it, and you'll have to rotate it three times completely to get all the marks to line back up. And so I'm gonna rotate it until all the marks line back up. You might run into a problem where you can't turn it, you can't because it just keeps coming untight. So you might have to take your impact and hit it a few times just to lock it down. And yeah, I'm using a silver socket, living life dangerously. All right, so we have our two marks right here that are even with the top of the head. And we have our little notch here that is pointed at the arrow. So this is how you set the timing on a D15, D16, uh, non-VTEC or VTEC Honda engine. It's pretty simple, very straightforward. It's hard to mess up. And now you have to get everything back together. And I would recommend to always put the timing cover back on because a rock could fling up in here, get stuck between the gear and the belt and then it causes all kinds of problems. And because we have the engine out of the car, this is something we don't have to deal with, but when the engine is in the car, you're going to have to remove your mount in order to get the timing belt over this. Because if you notice, the mount is here and it's attached to the frame. So you would never be able to get the belt on there without removing the mount. All right, now we have this little keyway that goes into the crank right there. And then we gotta get the crank pulley back on. So when you set your timing with the, uh, the distributor, um, your, I guess your firing order timing. You see these little marks on the, the crank pulley. What I always like to do is I'll fill them in 
let that dry and that way when you do your timing you could see it a lot better you have this little notch right here and then these when you look down with your timing light you want these notches to line up here when you look down straight down you want these to line up with your notches and that's basically how you set your distributor timing with a light gun so after editing the video it's like 20 minutes long so i'm gonna split the video into two and uh end it right here but hopefully this helps you with um you know how to set the timing on the honda d-series engines um it, it's really it's really pretty easy i know some people you know probably look at it and like oh my god that, that's so complex but it, it's honestly it's really not you know if some dumbass like me can do it you can do it so anyway i'm gonna end the video here and the next video we will get the valve cover on and finish uh, replacing all the the hoses on the intake manifold so thanks for watching and i'll see you all in the next video